Welcome to church this morning. Come on, would you stand to your feet with us? We're going to worship God. Satan fall like lightning. I saw darkness run for cover. But the miracle that I just can't get over, my name is registered in heaven. I believe in signs and wonders. I have resurrection power. Yes, I do. Still the
today and uh, I told them I wanted to come up after this song because for one it, it there's 
a lot of sentimental value in terms of what it means. Um, can we bring that down a little bit? It seems like, I don't know, the back. Just bring the music down a little. A couple years ago, we had a, one of our youth that had passed away. And you know, when somebody passes away, especially when a parent has to bury their children, it's never a good thing. And uh, so we played this song in her memorial service. And it was one of those things, it was a song basically like, God, where were you? God, where, where were you in this situation? And I love this song because the words say that God can't do anything. God can't fail. Like you may be asking the question, but he failed there. No, he didn't. He just took her home a little bit earlier. He saved her maybe from some things that she was going to have to deal with in the future. But she, she went home to be with the Father. So it wasn't a fail. And actually, she's in heaven there before us, which is pretty amazing. But I want to pray for some people. But before we do, is. Um, we have a, a DJ is having some organ failure right now, multiple organs. It doesn't look good. But I just know that my God is good. I mean, if you're a believer, if you're a Christian, you need to know that there's hope. And God's not going to fail. Because if you come to church, believe that God can heal. You can't believe that God can save. You can't believe that God can restore. And you say, I'm a believer, I'm a believer. Well, you need to start walking in faith. You need to start believing. Even though we can't see it, even though we don't understand it, God, I know you're in control. I know, God, that you will make a way where there isn't a way. I know, God, that you can restore even in a situation that looks like you can't be restored. Relationships. Friendships. So we're going to pray for DJ first off. We're going to pray for healing. If any of you need healing in your body, I want you to come to the altar right now. I want you to come to this altar and stand in faith. For Jesus. For Jesus. What, what, what do you want? And then he says, do you believe? We need to believe. And if you want healing, if you need healing, or if, even if you're going to stand in the gap for somebody that needs healing, come, come. And this is not, oh, this is kind of crazy. This is God. This is, this is God. God wants to move in your heart. God wants to heal. And I'm going to pray right now for those, and I want you to be in agreement. And if you're out there, if you're in agreement, if you want to stretch your hands forth and just say, I'm in agreement with this, let's, let's believe God. Because He cannot fail. The world may look like it as a fail. The world may look like it, oh, it didn't come through. God, God is God is in control. His ways, the Bible says, are higher than our ways. His thoughts are greater than our thoughts. Our job is just to be obedient to God. So let's gather together. Father God, I come to you first of all. I lift up DJ. While he's in a position right now where it looks like there is no hope. But our hope is not in the world. Our hope is not in the doctors. Our hope is not in diagnosis. Our hope is in you, Lord. Our anchor is in you. And while I pray right now in Jesus, those organs. Father God, I begin, to, I begin to, I pray that you would begin to infuse in him the power of the Holy Ghost, the power from on high. I pray that you would begin to mend and heal and, and move and, and, and put everything in alignment. Lord, you created him. When he was in his mother's womb, you created him to be on this planet, on this earth for a reason, for a purpose, Lord. And I believe it, Lord, Father, that you can heal and we're standing in agreement for his healing, for his complete healing. That when he comes out of this, he can come and lift you up and glorify your name. 
lift up the name of Jesus, how Jesus came and moved and a miracle took place. That he could go and look back on remembering on how you came through for him. And Father, I pray for those that are standing up here at the altar. Father, they're standing up here because they are believing as well. They're trusting you, Lord, that you are the God that heals. You are not only the God that saves. You're not only the God that rescues. You're not only the God that delivers. You are the God that heals. By your stripes, we were healed. And Father God, we as believers must stand in faith and believe that you are able just like it says in Ephesians 3 20, you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works on the inside of us. That doesn't mean that we can only imagine for great uh, things and money and possessions. But Lord, we can believe you for great things like healing in our bodies. But what good is it, Lord, if we gain the whole world, but yet we're sick in our body? We pray healing in their bodies right now from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet. Father God, we're praying right now in Jesus' name that as they walk out of this place, they're going to trust you. They're going to believe in you, Lord. Now, Father God, they're not going to come to the place of wondering, God, are you going to heal them? They're going to walk out and just trust you. Just like many in the Bible, they just walked away healed and went on with life. Lord, I pray, Lord, Father, they would have to, have to look back at that sickness or disease that they would walk Lord, you are God that doesn't fail. You've never lost a battle. You've never lost a battle. Let me see. You're going to sing that a little bit. You've never lost a battle. Never lost a battle. Never lost a battle. Never lost a battle. You never will. You never lost a battle. Never lost a battle. Never lost a battle. You never lost a battle. stories that it proved your faithfulness I've seen miracles my mind can't comprehend there is beauty in what I can't understand Jesus it's you Jesus it's you and I believe that the wonder you're the wonder working God All the miracles I've seen Too good to not believe You're the wonder Come on, and you heal because 
you heal because start out this morning all the miracles will see you're too good tonight come on every voice too good to not believe yeah. and i can resurrect a man with my own but just a mention, but just a mention of your name can raise the dead. Oh, the glory to the only one who can. Jesus is you. Jesus is you. I believe you're the wonder-working God. You're the one. Don't you tell me he can't do it. Don't you tell me he can't do it. I've seen real life resurrection. I've seen mental health restore. Don't you tell me he can't do it. Don't you tell me he can't do it. I've seen families reunited. I've seen prodigals return. Don't you tell me. I've seen troubled souls delivered. I've seen you I've seen hurts disappear. I've seen broken bodies here. Don't you tell me. Come on, everybody's in this room. We're going to sing this together. And I've seen real life. We're going to play over anxiety.
Father God, what an amazing moment we have to be able to be in your presence and the power of your healing internally, externally, our entire world. Father, we worship you in this moment with the depths of our hearts, and we give you place today. We're expectant of you in Jesus' name. Come on, let's give God a praise real quick. We got another song of worship for you guys coming up in just a second, but first, we got to say hello to the people that we're worshiping with. So turn around, tell somebody hello, tell them good day, tell them they look good, tell them you're happy they came today. Hey, if you're a part of our online audience, man, we're so excited you guys are here today worshiping with us in spirit. You know, location is not a factor, but man, if you're in town, you're feeling good, come on out, because uh, it's good online, but man, it is better in person. Well, folks, if you've been thoroughly greeted, you're welcome to grab a seat real quick as we just go through a couple of things before we jump back into worship. Hey, my name is Richard. I'm one of the pastors here at C3, and I'm super stoked to be here with you guys uh, just worshiping and, and just just, uh, just doing Sunday, doing life with you guys. Man, this is really exciting. As a matter of fact, if you guys are new, maybe you're one of our guests here, or maybe you you're, you haven't been here in a long time, we want to give you guys a big welcome. Let's give a big round of applause to all of our, our guests here today. Online, you guys too. Thanks so much for tuning in, whether it's live or a replay. Hey, if this is maybe your first time, if you're one of our guests, or maybe you're newer, then man, you've got to stop by our welcome table on the way out. Greet Pastor Donna and myself, one of the team, and we'd love to answer any questions you guys have, get to know your story, share ours a little bit with you guys, or hey, at the very least, just stop by and say, I would like to get mugged. Uh, we have we give mugs to our first time visitors. Uh, yeah, coffee mugs, coffee mugs. So we would love to send you off with a gift. So be sure to, to stop by the table on the way out and, and let us know who you are and, and why you guys chose C3 this morning, all right? One more big round of applause for our guests here today. Yeah. So this is our opportunity right now to continue with our worship through tithes and offerings. Hey! You know, I, the, one, there's one of my favorite books in the Bible is a book called Habakkuk. And uh, it, a lot of people easily skip over it because it's a weird name. But um, the book has this question, and the people are saying, God, why aren't things working? And, and what God simply says is, well, your priorities are out of line, right? They're like, God, I feel like I got holes in my pocket. I feel like, you know, every time I, I try to do something, it doesn't work. And God says, well, you've neglected your first priorities, and that's putting me first. And he says specifically in building the house, right? And it's the bizarrest thing in the world that when when I get my first things first, when I get the most important things out of my life, everything else seems to fall in line. What does God say? Seek first the kingdom of God. Priorities are so important. And in this aspect of my life, when I think of my finances, I need to make sure my finances have their priorities in order. I'm doing my budget, I'm putting my savings, and first and foremost, I'm taking care of the house of God's financial needs. This is our chance to be able to put God in first in our finances. Look, we already do it with our with our quiet time. We do it in every other place. Why wouldn't it be that way with our finances as well? You know, so, so today, if you're choosing to give, if you're choosing to live generously to your tithes and offerings, go ahead and get your hand up, and we would love to get you guys an envelope if you're giving by cash or check. Otherwise, we have digital ways of giving as well. So go ahead and get your hands up. The ushers will get you guys going, and uh, we'll go ahead and receive the offering uh, today as well. So I want to go ahead and pray, and ushers, as soon as we pray, you guys are welcome to pass out the bucket. So Father God, thank you for this reminder that 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 you are worthy of first place in every aspect of our lives God, not just our devotional life God, not just our, our week with Sundays at church God, but father also in these areas of our physical substance our finance as well so Lord today I just ask that you would challenge us in that place father God that we would consider our way as it says in the back of father God and we would consider father God where, where you fall in line in our financial and our physical life, Father God. Today, God, we choose to give willingly and generously in this avenue. Pray these things in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen. You guys will pass out the buckets, pass them down, and we're good to go. And we, uh, today, we, I just want to give you guys a couple of, uh, uh, updates on some of the things coming up. Of course, we do growth track for all those who are newer. A growth track is after services. Sign up because we'd love to buy you lunch while you're figuring out how, uh, how your fit is in C3. And then also, too, next week is, well, next week is the 3rd of July, but, you know, we're the church, so we'll never pass up an opportunity to celebrate. So we'll be having, a, a hot, like, a hot dog picnic in the lobby in the air conditioning. So you guys are welcome to stick around, right? 
yeah, yeah, you guys are welcome to stick around. We'll have a 3rd of July picnic out there in the uh, in the lobby. We'll bring the dogs, you bring the family, and we'll be good to go. And we'll be hanging out for a little bit after service, getting to know each other, sharing stories, and talking about uh, the 4th and 3rd of July and Jesus and all that good stuff. And then lastly here, uh, we're getting ready for July. I mean, it, I mean, that means first Wednesday's coming up. Yeah. July 6th is first Wednesday, and I'm super pumped because uh, we get a chance to hear the word on that Wednesday, 7 p.m. Uh, we have youth and all that kind of stuff going on as well, but I'm excited because Mike will be sharing the word today. So that one, well, on that day, on that day. Uh, so I'm excited to come out and hear the word uh, that, that evening with, uh, with Mike, uh, and um, it'll be absolutely wonderful on July 6th. So let's do this. With those things said and done, let's go ahead and stand up today as we pray to get back into worship. Father God, we worship you in this moment. Lord, help us to fix our eyes on you as we sing of your goodness in Jesus' name. I'm going to invite you to continue singing with us this morning. Um, and I feel like God just put on my heart. We're just saying too good to not believe. Some of you need to sing that in faith tonight. You can't necessarily sing that and, and, and believe it. You need to sing it looking back in your life and see the moments where God has had you. We're going to sing this song. I'm going to invite you to sing with us. And I want you to think about that as we sing this. There's a grace when the heart is under fire. Another way when the walls are closing in. When I look at the space between where I used to be and this reckoning, I know I will never be alone. We sing this, there was, there was another in the fire sitting next to me. There was another in the waters holding back the sea. And should I ever need remind of how I've been set free? There is a cross that bears the burden. Will another die for me? Will he's another in the fire? And all my death, all my death left for death and me. Slave to my sin anymore. Should I fall in the space between what remains of me and this reckoning? Either way, I will bow to the things of this world. I know, I know. Sing it, there is no other name. 
no other name but the name that is Jesus. Yeah. Come on. He who was and still is and will be through it all. We sing this, so come. Remain in the space between all the things I've seen and this reckoning. I know, I know I will never be. Come on, church, you lift your voice. I know. This week was an amazing week for believers. And the statements of what I'm about to say is, well, I want you to believe it's not political, so don't take it as political. It's about Bible. It's about God. But what was done in the, the Supreme Court, the decision that was made, believers for decades, I remember as a youth pastor, I would show up a, a film about abortion and I used to get parents permission because it was one of those things I asked my past senior pastor is it okay if I show this because people need to understand what what it does but for decades believers have been praying and believing for being a voice for those voices that cannot be heard being the the ones that would stand in the gap and like I said, this is not, don't even go there because this is not political. This is about life. If God ordained it, if God says when 
we were in our mother's womb, that he began to form us. He began to fashion us. That our name was written in the book before there was no book. It tells me that there was life. And so, for decades, the church has been praying. The church has been believing. They've been under pressure. They've been in the fire. But yet God came through. God knows what he's doing. And it's, it's one of those things that whatever you believe, or what you should do and what you shouldn't do, that's your choice. And there's a lot of voices out there that are making a, a, a big stink about it, a big fuss. You know what? It, the Supreme Court, I don't think the Supreme Court should make a decision for every individual in the United States. And so they're saying, this is going to be on you. This is on your state. This is on you. And that's why believers need to stand up. Now, if you want to sit down, let's talk. But I don't go on social media because I want a conversation. I don't want to debate with people. Because people that are going online, they don't want to have conversation. They just want to debate. And I'm glad to talk with you of uh, why I believe what I believe. But I, I'm going to take you back to the Word of God, to what the Word of God said. And this is nothing new. This is nothing new. Thousands of years ago, Remember thousands of years ago when the Pharaoh said, you know what, we want to destroy and kill all baby boys? Why? Because God was raising up a deliverer by the name of Moses. Then thousands of years later, Herod came along, we need to destroy all the baby boys that were being born. Why? Because God was bringing up and delivering, we got to bring a deliverer by the name of Jesus. Why do you think the devil is so hard on destroying life because he knows that God is raising up a generation of people that will not bow down to the ways of the world, that won't bow down they, they'll, they'll be willing to go into the fire that will not bow down and so anyway I think that's well, as we sing these songs that, you know God is faithful and you just we just need to trust God and when things don't go our way as Christians as believers just say, you know what, God, I don't know the big picture, but you do. When it reverses again, or if it reverses again, or whatever happens, God, I don't know, but I'm going to take the victory. I'm going to stand and trust that what, you, what you're going to do and how you're going to do it, and what you're going to do is going to make a way for people to come and to stand up. I have a friend that was, he's a great preacher. His mother was at the place of saying, should I abort my child? I'm just so grateful that my mom did not have to do that with me. I'm so grateful that I'm here. But I, like I said, I just, I think it's a victory for the church. This is not, like I said, I, I don't want you, I don't want you thinking, uh, those of you that are online, I don't want you like, uh, this is not political. Please believe me. I'm, not, I, I'm just trying to preach the gospel. And if I were to be silent, that's what's the whole purpose of the, the people that want to silence believers and Christians for standing up for truth and righteousness. So I'm going to pray today. We're going to get into the Word. My message isn't about that. I just thought, I thought these were such a, amazing songs because it's all about trusting God. It's all about believing God. It's all about being persecuted and being under the fire, knowing that God is in control. No matter what happens in this world, no matter what happens in this state of California, where I, I'm still going to worship God. I'm still going to be faithful to God. I'm still going to be obedient, obedient to God. No matter what persecution may come my way, I will stand for truth and righteousness, peace, hope, faith, love in the word of God. Before we, uh, before we get in prayer, I saw and uh, I just wanted to say, make the statement. We have a, a friend's uh, lead that had uh, cancer up in, um, up in Washington area. 
good friends of ours, uh, Lloyd and Glenda is their son-in-law, and they go to this church in the winter time when it's nice and cool, not the summer time. But they just uh, reminded us, and we heard that this week, that Lee, who's been battling with his cancer, cancer-free, cancer-free, cancer-free. Don't tell me. You can't tell me that it doesn't, that God isn't true, God isn't real, that God doesn't heal, that God doesn't deliver. Let's pray. You ready to pray? Oh, I think I might. Uh, this is just a cue that, God, you want me to play the guitar? No, I'm just kidding. I'm going to put this in my pocket. Father, I just thank you, Lord. Father, sometimes when life throws a curveball at us, it's like, what do we do, God? And instead of panicking, Lord, I, I want to walk in peace and rest just to know, Lord, that you are in control and that I'll just be obedient to what you say, what to do. And you know, I always don't always do it. I don't always do the right things, but Lord, I, I ask that today that you would speak through me, that as I speak your word, it's not me but it's your word that's going to come forth. Father, we just thank you, Lord. I thank you for our opportunity to come and gather together and worship you collectively as the body of Christ, as the family of Christ. And Father, I pray right now for all the churches, not only here in the valley, but around the world that are preaching the gospel. Father, we, we, we may have different assignments, but we're on the same team. So, Father, I pray for our, our Baptists, brothers and sisters, our Methodists, Lutherans, Episcopalians, Foursquare, Pentecostals, Assemblies of God. Father, all the great churches in this valley like Southwest and Destiny and JPL, Desert Life, Desert Springs, Champion Life. Lord, bless those churches. Father, I pray that, Lord, that you would fill them up. I pray revival would take place, that every church in this valley that preaches the name of Jesus would be filled, and that revival would take place here in the Coachella Valley. That we would all, the churches gather together and make the name of Jesus famous. That David said, I'm doing what I'm doing. That all the world will know that there's a God in Israel. I pray that all the churches in the valley, as we pray and are in agreement, that we, that we believe that, and know that everyone is in agreement, that all the Coachella Valley would know that there's a God in this valley that cares about them. Father, we just thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Give the Lord a praise. Have a seat. Love you guys. You guys are amazing. And, oh man, the, the team, didn't they just do amazing today? Let's give it up for the team. They're just so awesome. I want you to get your Bibles. I want you to turn uh, to Matthew in the fifth chapter. We're going to go there here in a moment. Um, I told the, the team, you can put 20 minutes on. Usually I go about 35 minutes. I told them 20 minutes, and but we'll see how long it goes or there. But I, I, I just want to, uh, we're going to continue. Kind of a couple weeks ago, I started a series. And I wasn't really, it was kind of, yeah, let's start a series because I was speaking in New York a few weeks ago. And they asked me to kick off a series that they were doing called Influence. And, you know, New York City, that's what New York City is all about. It's influence, uh, the, the financial influence and the fashion influence. And just uh, everybody moves there because that's really the hub of, of a lot of what the world is determined by, is by the influence of, of New York. So I was at, uh, at C3 NYC, and it was great to, to, to start that series for them. But then I thought to myself, well, I'm going to just bring it back. Why should I just start from them? Let's bring it back here and let's talk about it. And Pastor Donna last week talked about the influence of a, of a husband and a father and since it was Father's Day. But, you know, we live in a, 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 in a world of, of influence. We, we see TV, we see Instagram, we see Facebook, and there's so many influences. And what influences do and what they are is what they do is they try to, to affect our, a person's character and a person's behavior. It could be an influence whether it's good or bad. You could be influenced by a drug addict. You could be influenced by a Christian believer. You could be influenced by a sports athlete. You could be influenced by a movie star. Whatever it may be, 
people are out there to try to influence, whether it's good or bad. And many people want to be influencers, and we're going to talk about this because we, in all reality, we are all influencing someone. But people think that influencer, to be an influencer, is all about I have to have a, a million followers and then I could be an influencer. I have to have the, uh, a, a million followers and then I could begin to influence people. But, but really, your influence is really based on who's in your world. You know, I, I have a lot of followers, not like many people, but I have uh, quite a few followers, and, but, but in all reality, I don't think my influence, I say things, maybe do things, maybe in the skate world, whatever it may be, and I think probably I have that type of influence in their life, but in all reality, my influence is, is in my world. My influence is with my family. My influence is with our, our children. My influence is, is with our church people that I have contact with on a daily basis. Those are the, really the people that I have influence with. God says in his word that you have influence. You are influential. You are an influencer. Even though you may not think of it, you are. But a lot of people say, well, I, I can't really influence anybody because I'm not famous. I don't have lots of followers. I don't, I don't do this and I don't do that. And in all reality, those are just excuses. Many times we, we downplay on our influence in a person's life. The little boy with the lunch came to Jesus and says, oh, I have a few loaves and a few fish. One, one little boy, one little lunch was able to feed thousands, so it, Jesus was able to continue to preach the gospel. He didn't have to send them away. I, I talked about Mordecai Ham, and you, but most of you probably don't know who Mordecai Ham, but if I talk about Billy Graham, you know who Billy Graham is. He's the one that led Billy Graham to the Lord when he was a little boy. The influence of one. Somebody, sometimes we don't realize, we underestimate the power of influencing one person. We think that we have to influence the masses, the multitudes. But really, God is just saying, I want you to be an influence in your world where you're at. You don't have to try to reach the world. Just influence your world with, with people that are in your sphere of influence. The, the Bible tells us in, in Romans, the, the fifth chapter, verse number 12, that just as sin entered the world through one man. Sin entered this world. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. All have sin because, because of what happened in the garden. By one decision, one disobedient person in the garden, sin came to this world. It says just as sin entered the world through one man, death through sin. And in this way, death came to all men because all have sinned. That's the power, the influence that we have in a person's life. We think that we have to... Do the masses, like I said, but it's the, the power of one that makes a difference. Then we see how in Romans, uh, the, the fifth chapter, verse 17, it says, For if by one man's offense, death reigned, so sin, death came because of one man, how much more by one would receive the abundance of grace through the one Jesus Christ? You see, one, by one man's offense, the power of one, sin came to this earth. But the power of one, Jesus Christ, abolished sin, death, hell. Now we have the ability to have eternal life. God is now saying you can make a difference. You are the influencer. You're the influencer in your world. And I'm kind of just doing a little recap because we're going to get into it because it was a couple weeks ago before I, uh, uh, the last time I, I, I talked about this. But it's so important for us to understand the influence that we have. Now, I want you to go to Matthew, the fifth chapter, if you're not already there. We're going to start in verse number 13. Because God has called all of us, all of us to be influencers. He's called all of us to make a difference. He's called all of us as believers, as Christians, to influence others. And really, it all determines on your relationship, your convictions, what's in your heart, what you believe according to the Word of God. And how you're going to influence people. Like I said, you can influence people whether good or bad. Matthew, the fifth chapter, says, You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing, but is thrown into trampled underfoot by men. It says, You're the light of the world. A city is set on a hill, cannot be hidden. Nor do they light lamps and put them under a basket, but on a lampstand, and give it light to all who are in the house. And then it says in verse 16, let your light shine before men. Let your light, let what's on the inside of you, let who you are be an influence 
to those around you before men. Let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. I talked about this a couple weeks, a few weeks ago when I talked about the salt. When we, when we talk about the salt, we, I'm the salt of the earth, we think about a salt shaker. These little granules of salt, salt that just come out of a little salt shaker. But, but, but that's not what really what God was really talking about. That's not what the Holy Spirit was talking about. You see, people back then, they, they lived and they had big chunks of salt. And salt, it was very, very expensive and is very valuable. They would take the, big, the salt and they would use it and they would rub it on the meat. They did not have uh, refrigerators. They did not have freezers. So they would rub it on the meat to help from the bacteria growing on, on, the, on the meat. And then also, too, which is salt, which is why I love salt, is because it brings flavor. It brings flavor to what is around it. So the influence of that salt is going to help to keep that bacteria away, but then there's also the, the, the influence of that salt that's going to bring flavor to what's around it, surrounding it. And so when he's talking and when he's giving this illustration, he's not just talking about the salt that we know of and the salt that we put on, on, our, on our food, but he's talking about being a big chunk of salt, being, being uh, influential, being making a difference, being uh, uh, more than just a little grain of salt, but yet helping to change a person's life, helping to direct somebody's life towards the things of God. And so if we are and have this relationship with Jesus Christ, that's the influence that we want to bring to others. You see, my influence, a lot of times, I was more influential in the skateboard world as a professional skateboarder and being in the Skateboard Hall of Fame. And many of you may have seen the, 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 the billboards that we put up, and it's not because I wanted to pat me on the back. I just wanted to let people know, hey, you know what? I want, I, I want to let people know my stories. Why? So I could tell them about Jesus. That's the only reason. But I used to do and have my influence and influence people within the skateboard world. But then when I became a believer and as a Christian, it's like, you know what? I want everybody to know about Jesus Christ. I want them to know about his love and the forgiveness. I want everybody to know that he loves them. He's not mad at them. I, I want everybody to know that, you know what, I love you and I accept you. I'm not here to judge you. I'm not here to point fingers at you. I, I, I'm here to love you to life. Just like we say here, I want to I love you to life. And that's the thing is, is, is we, we get in the category of trying to judge people and point fingers at people because they don't live the way that I live. Or they don't live the way that you live. All I'm doing is saying, I want to know what God says and how I can make a difference in someone's life by what I know of the Word of God. I, I can't tell you any, any more than what I know. I'm just going to live my life out, and that's the influence I am going to have. And so as we live our lives, we, we God says, you could be the salt, you're the salt, you're the light, you're, you, you could be the light in darkness, you could be the salt, because that's the way I've made you. You can be an influence, and you can literally, literally change the atmosphere around you when you walk in a room. You could be in a room, and they could be so negative, and they could be so down, and they could be like, oh man, this is the, the end of the world, and you could come in and bring hope, you could bring faith, you could bring love, you could bring and change the atmosphere because of what's on the inside of you, but if you don't have the word of God on the inside, it's going to be hard for you to influence a person in that way. Or you could be a, a, a downer, and, and you could be influencing people in that way. You could be in a room that is so happy and excited, and all of a sudden there's somebody, you walk in a room, and you could be, oh man, what a miserable day. Oh, it's so hot. Oh, this is wrong, and that's wrong. And I, and I, and I don't, I, I, I've said this before, I don't like to be around negative people because they make me itch. So if I start itching around you, you just know that, you know what, and, and I just want people, I want people around me that are a people of faith. We could go outside and we could talk. I remember when we first moved out here, it was about 17 years ago when we planted the church, and we came from San Bernardino, a very large church out there, and, and uh, everybody, we would, we would come do church here, pack up, tear down, go back there, and we're still on staff there, and everybody would say, oh, and we started in the summertime. July 17th is our anniversary, and that's coming up pretty soon. And so we, we would go back, and everybody said, oh, the first day we started, I think it was 123. It's like, what are we doing starting church? 
And that's the thing is, it's like we would want to go back and say, oh, it's so hot. But then we realized that everybody was already telling us, oh, man, why are you planting a church out there? Oh, it's so hot. Oh, it's so miserable. Why are you going out? And Pastor Donna, she just, she just one day, instead of hearing all this negative, instead of saying, wow, you're planting a church. You're going where people don't want to go. It's, it's, it's hot out there. Instead of being excited, they're just being the downers. And all of a sudden, Pastor Donna came along, and she says, you know what? Well, it's hot pulling people out of hell. And she just, boom, boom, mic drop, walked away. And it's like, ever since then, it's like, whenever people started, and see, they could have affected, they could have influenced us to get, begin to like think negative about the valley instead of saying, you know what? Okay. I think I had this conversation with somebody else because everybody is moving out of California, moving out of California. I said, why, why can't you just stay and be a light? Instead of running to maybe where things might be looking a little, oh, I want to go here because of this. I want to go here. You know, I don't like the, the, the way that, but you know what? Maybe God has called you here. Right. Instead of just saying, I just want to live in a better place. I know I just met somebody today that moved to California. I'm thinking to myself, and I was happy about them. But I'm thinking, man, everybody's moving out. You're moving here. It's like, wow. But we're called to be an influence. We're called to make a difference couple things that I said a couple weeks ago, I said we, 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 uh, we lead others, uh, influencers lead others in the right direction. You, you lead others in the right direction. So if you want to influence others, you got to make a decision what kind of influence you're going to be. How are you going to influence others? Do you want, what, is your, what do you want to influence people to do? You want to influence as a, as a church, as a body, as believers? We need to know, we need to influence, just like Jesus says, go into all the world and preach the gospel. We want to influence people to, hey, I want to preach the gospel. I want you to know that God loves you. I want you to know that he died for your sins, that you don't have to go to hell when you did yet. You could go to heaven, that God has a plan for your purpose in life. He has something great for you. What are the direction, how are you going to influence What's the direction you're going in? And we, we talked about a couple things a couple weeks ago. And, and then, uh, 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 then also I said, I said about getting close to those who you want to influence. You need to be around them. I, I love, like as a pastor here, and ever since we founded this church, I wasn't one of those pastors that would be in the back in the green room and then be wished out in the second song of, and then preach the message. And then when the, or when the band comes up at the end, I'm going to whoosh off and go back into my little cave and my little dungeon. I've always wanted to be around the sheep. I'm always greeting. A lot of time I'll be greeting, and then all of a sudden people will say, oh, man, I didn't know you were the pastor. You were, and then I come standing on this pulpit. I mean, I, I just want to be around. How am I going to influence people? I'm not going to just influence you just by the words that I say from this pulpit. But I want you to know who I am. I'm just a regular guy. I want to be a pastor that smells like the sheep. Shouldn't a pastor, a shepherd smell like the sheep? And that's the kind of pastor. So I want to be, you got to be close to those that you're going to influence. And then your actions need to speak louder than your words. It's not just me saying, oh, yes, do this, do this, do this. And as a believer, and then all of a sudden, well, how do I know that you're doing Hey, we're always bringing people to our house. We're always inviting them. We're, we're open. We're an open book. We're not perfect. We, we, we try to live the best life that we can. But we want to let you know, this is who we are. We're not trying to put on a show. But how can I influence you? I can influence you by telling you what to do. But I don't think that's a great way to influence somebody. I think letting them see your life and say, okay, yeah, they're going through struggles, and he's the pastor, so you know what, maybe, maybe I could go through those struggles. So then a couple things just for today and a, and a few minutes that we have. If we want to be the believers that God has called us to be, if we're going to preach the gospel and go into all the world just like Jesus has told us to do, we need to have our, 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 uh, our faith needs to be strong in the Lord. You see, the point of influencing others is not what you do, it's, but it's who you are. And I kind of spoke about that a little bit. It's, it's, not, it's not what you do, because I could do a lot of things that make you think, oh, man, he's such a godly man. Oh, he's such a, it's who you are. And what you are is really going to influence somebody's life. And what you are is really going to make a difference. Who you are and how do you get strong in the Lord is by Spending time with your family and your friends and your coworkers and, and, and being an influence, staying close to God, listening to God, reading his word and being obedient. That, it's, that's how it's being close to people. Another thing is having your life on display. It shows 
one of those things is a lot of people don't like to have their life on display when they're not really living the life that they're called to live. I'm just living my life. I'm doing my life. And I'm just saying this is, this is who, who I am. This is what you get. I, I don't dress like, I mean, I've always dressed like this. I'm, this is who I am. I'm, I'm a pastor, but yet I'm a skateboarder. I, I, I have opportunity influence in, the, in this realm, but I also have the opportunity to, to be in a realm where there's a lot of sinners and a lot of people that, that, that drink and get drunk and do drugs and a lot of people that cuss. And I'm not going into their world and trying to be someone that I'm not. And I'm not coming into this world and trying to be something that I'm not. I'm just saying, this is my life. This is how I display my life. And that's how you're really going to make a difference in somebody's life. Is by letting your life be displayed out there. This is who I am. And that's why it's so important in our lives that we, that we um, live, are living the life that we say we're living. That, that, we're, that we're not saying one thing to other, some people, but yet doing another thing when we're not around them. And then all of a sudden they hear about us in the way and the things that we're doing. Another thing is this, have a strong, strong beliefs. And be bold about them. Being an influence is having strong belief in what you believe in. You know, I talked a little bit about earlier about what took place in our nation. And there's a lot of voices that are coming out, that are saying things. They're believers too, but it's not really what maybe what you believe, or maybe it is what you believe. And it's one of those things that you need to be strong in your belief and be bold about it. Now, for me, like I said, I'm not going to just go on and tweet something or post something just because everybody's doing it. I'm not going to uh, uh, repost something just because somebody said it. Because I, I, I want to I want to have conversation. Doing that, all you're going to do is you're going to get debates. Because you'll say something, somebody's going to say something about it. And you know what it's going to do? It's going to cut me from having the ability to speak into the lies. Because I have a lot of influence, like I said, and I, and I don't do this to pat myself on the back, but I have a lot of influence in the skateboard world. And I'm not going to throw out a tweet just to alienate everyone just because of one idea and one thought of how they think or the way I think. You know the way I think? You know why I think the way that I think? It's because of the Word of God. And you're going to think, and you're going to make decisions based on what you think, based on the Word of God. How much of the Word of God do you have? And that's why it's so important of how strong our beliefs are and what we believe in. I mean, we were talking about uh, uh, being in the fire. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, their belief was we will not bow down to this world. We're not going to bow down to you, King Nebuchadnezzar. We're not going to bow down to anyone, and we will go through the fire. We will be in the fire. We'll do whatever it takes. That's how strong. There were only three guys that were able to stand up at that time. That's how strong their belief was. And that's how they're influenced. They're influenced by them standing in the, uh, standing for what they believe in, took them into the fire when the fourth man in the fire, Jesus Christ, the Son of, God, Son of God, was there with them in the fire. All of a sudden, they came out. King Nebuchadnezzar was crazy. He threw the ones that were the, accusing them, threw them in the fire. Wow. Why? Because that's the influence they had because they believed in what they believed in so strongly. Remember Daniel. Daniel said they put a decree out. His beliefs, his convictions, his, his standards was everything according to God. And when they said, don't pray, he says, he didn't say, well, I, oh, if I could just hide and pray. He says, I'm going to do what I normally do. I'm going to be bold about my faith. I'm not going to be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Just like the Apostle Paul says, don't be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you are a believer, you, 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 you got to be bold. And so, so Daniel says, I'm going to go, and I'm going to do what I normally do. And now it might get me into trouble, but my conviction says this is where I'm at. Why? Because he was bold 
in what he did. If you're going to influence somebody, be bold in your beliefs. Be bold in what you did. Now, coming back to skating. When I was coming up in the ranks as a professional skateboarder, um, there was skateboarding was kind of new, it was pioneering in terms of bowl competitions and, and big skate bowls. And mostly everybody at that time would skate um, in terms of like surf style. Many of you, there was a documentary out called uh, the, the, the Lords of Dogtown where they were skating in empty swimming pools. And so that was kind of the style of skateboarding. I grew up in a small little town in Lake Arrowhead, California, far from the beach. I was not a surfer. I never went surfing. I didn't have the surf style. And so my belief was I can't, do tr I can't carve like a surfer and I can't do what they do, but I could do tricks. And so I started inventing these tricks. And I invented a trick that was named after me called the El Garial and the frontside rock and roll and the frontside invert and the fake yelly. Some of you are like, yeah, I don't even know any of that. But, but believe me, these, these are tricks that were, that were invented because that's what I knew to do. So I was strong in my belief that I could be a skateboarder and I could make an influence in the skateboard world and I could win contests and I could do it without being a surfer. These surfers, they didn't like it. Oh, you're just all about tricks. Tricks are for kids. They used to spit on me in contests. They would try to make me fall. They would try to do whatever because they didn't like my beliefs and what, the way I did skateboarding. But because I was so strong on my beliefs, I didn't say bow down and say, okay, I, I won't do tricks anymore. I'll try to surf and I'll try to be like you. I just said, no, this is, this is who I am. This is how I skate. This is, I'm, this is, I'm going to do what I know to be. I was strong in my beliefs. I was bold about what I did. And I just kept on going, winning contests. And eventually, there was a little boy who was watching. Because I didn't cave in. Because I didn't say, I must be a surfer. I must do it this way. There was a little boy. He was 12, 13 years old by the name of Tony Hawk. Now, most of you have heard about Tony Hawk. You may not know about him skateboarding. You might know him about his video games. You might have seen him on a cameo on a TV, uh, on a TV appearance. We were in, in Argentina. I think I, sh I think I shared this story uh, before, but we were in Argentina doing a uh, Tony Hawk and Friends skateboard demonstration, 50,000 people, and we were in a taxi cab, and the taxi cab driver says, what are you doing here? And we said, oh, we're here because of uh, Tony Hawk, the skateboarding. You know how the, the, the taxi cab driver knew who Tony Hawk was? He goes, oh, is he the guy that's on The Simpsons? That's all he knew, because he was a character on The Simpsons. But yet he was a little boy. He was looking up to me because I did not bow down. To this day, he says that Eddie Elgar was, was the most influential skater at the time. And you know what? He inspired me. Tony Hawk wasn't a surfer. He was lanky. He didn't have all the style, but he says that I could do tricks. And I influenced him that way. The power of one, the influence of one. But it was because of my strong beliefs on what I, what I lived in my life. But the same as in our Christian life. It's how much... Will you stand up? How much will you bow down? How much will you give in? That's the influence you're going to have. The, the influence that you have in your world, your family that you raise, it's going to be based on your convictions and your life. If you are not bold about your faith, they're not going to be bold about your faith. If you're strong in your faith, they're going to be strong in their faith. If you pray, they're going to pray. And so it's about being bold in our faith. Jesus says that you are the light of the world, not the light of the church. When I come to church, I'm going to let everybody know how good I am in church. It's not about this. It's, not, it's about going into the world and being the light. He says, be the light. Don't hide your light. Don't hide it, but be the light. Be the salt. Be the flavor. Be the, uh, be the, the, the seasoning. And the last thing is this for today, just quickly and I'm kind of going through this quickly because I just wanted to give time for the Holy Spirit earlier on. But our influence is for God's glory. The Bible says, let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. As believers, we need to let our light shine before men that they may see our good works, but they may see and glorify their Father in heaven. 
See, this is not about me. I'm, I'm so good. I'm such a strong Christian. Or I'm such a strong believer. You're, you're great at this. You're great at that. Influencing. I, I want them to, imp, I want to influence people so they would glorify the Father. That they would realize, oh man, it's all about Jesus. The reason that I'm able to stand here is because of Jesus Christ. The reason I'm able to preach the gospel is because of Jesus Christ. I am nothing special. I'm not articulate. I'm not, I don't know Greek and Hebrew. When we want Greek and Hebrew, we bring up Pastor Richard, and he can tell you the Greek and Hebrew, and, but, you know, I'm just going to come, and I'm going to, this is who I am. I may stutter. I may have... <laughs> say things that, and believe me, I probably have said scripture and given the, the wrong address for the scripture. And I'm not saying I'm perfect, I know, know it all, but I want everyone to say, you know what, it's not about me. If somebody gets saved, if somebody gives their life to the Lord, if something happens, man, I give God the glory. God, thank you. In, in spite of all my shortcomings in spite of everything that I did that was wrong in my message. That's why, you know what, on Sundays, I don't, I don't, I don't like to go back. I, I, don't even, I don't even like to watch myself. Recently, they were put, they've been putting some things on social media, and I'm like, oh, God, I don't even want to look at it. I don't even want it because... But then I look at it and say, oh, you know what? Even though I was like a fool, even though I messed up, God still came through. People got healed. People got saved. Saved. Lives were changed. Hey, it, it was a good day in the Lord. But I think our influence is for God's glory. He needs to let, we need to let him get the glory and not pat ourselves on the back. We see that when we start patting ourselves on the back, what happens? Pride comes in. What happens to pride? Destruction, we, pride comes before the fall. Believe me, I am not, I'm not here. The only reason that I, that, that I, we have the billboard up, it's not because of me. Because someone said, and somebody offered to help uh, a donor to pay, because they said, Pastor, we want people to, we want you to let people know that, that who you are. And that you came, you were a world champion, and now you're, you're, you're a pastor. I said, well, all right, but I don't, I'm not really going to like it, but I'll do it. But um, some of you say, what, 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 Billboard? Well, you're just going to have to go drive down the 10 and come back if you want to see it. But it's not about, believe me, I'm thinking, no, I don't want to do this. I want to do this. But they said, you know what? We think, we, we think you should, even though you don't. I don't like it. And they, even though a lot of times I, I cringe when I tell my story, a lot of you that are here, you've heard my story a million times. But yet at the same time, it's, it's, I want to give God the glory. I realize that everything in my life that I have is because of God. And the influence that I have in people's life, I want to acknowledge that. I want to make sure that I direct people to Jesus. One of, my, one of the, the, the persons in my life that... Besides my family, I, I love that my, my family, I, my three boys, they all love the Lord. That's the most important thing. My, my, my heart's desire, what, what? my kids don't love God. What am I doing? What, what's my business of doing church? But I'm grateful for that. They, they love God. But then also, too, the, the influence that I had um, with, uh, as a youth pastor, I believe that there's a lot of seeds that were sown over the years. Now I'm beginning to see a lot of fruit, which is, which is amazing. I, I, I love that. But I give, give God all the glory. I mean, there was things that I did as a youth person. I'm thinking, what am I doing? I don't even know uh, what I'm doing. I, don't, I shouldn't even be up here. And that's why sometimes when people ask me to come and speak at their churches, I, I'm just like, I don't know if I really want to do this. Because I don't... If you were to ask me to come and stand, you can ask Pastor Donna, like if I were to go to, I don't, I'm kind of shy. But I do this because God said do it. And when I'm up here worshiping, 
It's not a show. I love to worship God. And that's the influence that I want to have. To influence people that God would get the glory. That people would say, hey, you know what? <laughs> if God can do it through Pastor Eddie, if God can use Pastor Eddie, God can use me. I hope that's your attitude. And he stutters or he does a lot of filler words or he says it this way, does it this way. You know what? I just want God to get the glory. We're going to dismiss here in a moment, but if you're here, we never want to leave this place without giving people the opportunity to get right with God. I don't know where you're at with God. But God, I, 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 I think that the word that God, I don't know who it's for, but there's a word that God wants for you. He wants you to know that he's not mad at you. Oh, God. If there's anything that you get today, he's not mad at you. He loves you. He cares about you. And he knows the struggles that you are going through the temptations that you're going through, the doubt that you're going through, because all sin was put upon him. That's how he was able to conquer sin and death so he could relate to us. But he's not mad at you. And he wants you to know that he loves you passionately. But most of all, he wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to have a relationship with you. And you might be at that place where you did have a relationship at one time, but you've fallen away. The distractions and the cares of this world have, have pulled you away from God and you just got busy. And it's not that you don't love God, but maybe you're not spending that time like you used to spend with Him. See, when we first started dating, oh man, you couldn't keep me away. We would stay up late at night. We would talk till early in the morning, and then I'd go home and get up early in the morning. But I didn't care. Nowadays, it's like, I can't go to a midweek service. I got work. Because of the relationship. Our relationship, it's funny because usually wherever I go, there she is. And I love it. I love that we're able to do that because we have to keep that relationship strong. That's the way it is with God and His Word. Before COVID, God was sharing with me the importance of getting into His Word. So the year before COVID hit, we as a church gathered together and we got into the daily reading. And a lot of people did it. A lot of people got the Bible. And, every, and then we would do talk about what God was speaking to us. We went through the Bible in the year for as a church. We did it for a couple years. And then this year, we talked about discipleship and the importance of discipleship. So if COVID or something like that happens again, that's probably one of the biggest reasons why a lot of people left the church is because of not being discipled and Jesus Christ and the relationship with Jesus Christ wasn't strong. But I realized once we got into it how much I've kind of neglected. Yes, as a pastor, neglected. I would read my word. Yes, I would study the Word of God. Yes, I would put sermons together. But then there was, when we got back into reading the Bible, it was like, and every day through the whole Bible over the last four years, I realized, wow, how important it is to my relationship and my strength in Jesus Christ. God wants a relationship with you. 
If you've never given your life over to Jesus Christ, today's the day. If you have at one time or another, but you've never followed through, today's the day. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads and close your eyes. And I'm going to ask you in, in a minute, just if that's you, to get your hand up. And you say, why, why are you doing that, Pastor? Because Jesus says, if you confess me before man, I'll confess you before my Father in heaven. But if you deny me before man, I'll deny you before my Father in heaven. I'll see your hand go up. And what you're doing is saying, I'm going to be bold in this decision that I'm making for Jesus Christ. And I pray that if you're in this place and you're not sure where you're at with God, that you would just make that as a step of faith. Put your trust in Him. He wants to be in the fire with you. It only happens when you have that relationship with Him. You need to invite Him into your life. He's not going to invade your life. It must be an invitation. So if that's you, just at the count of three, if you want to get right with God, get your hand up, whether there's one or two or five or ten, whatever it is, if you know who you are, I want to pray with you. One two, three. Anybody? God bless you. There's one, two, three. Anybody else? Four. Anybody else? You can put your hands down if I saw your hands. Anybody else? Now I want everybody to stand your feet. This is what we're going to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you to do something bold. I'm going to ask you, because I want to lead you in a prayer, I'm going to ask you to do something bold. I'm going to ask you to step out of your seat and come to this altar. First off, I want to shake your hand because of the decision that you're about to make. Man, I'm so excited. I get to congratulate you in this new life as a believer. But then secondly, I want to get the privilege to pray for you, to lead you in this prayer to say, Jesus, be Lord and Savior of our life. So if that's you, if you raise your hands, if you didn't raise your hands and you did, and you know you should have and you want to pray this prayer, come to this. Come on up. Come on up. Come forward. I want to shake your hand and let you know. God bless you. God bless you. Come on up. No, no stay right here. Come, come. I want to just stay here. Hey, come on up. If you raise your hand, come on up. It's all right. Don't worry. They're happy for you. Come on up. Come on. God bless you. Anybody else? Come on. It's okay. Come on, you can come. All right. Come on, let's give them a hand. I know it's, it can be embarrassing, but you know what? How amazing is it? God bless you. God bless you. you want to stand right here? Just stand right there. Okay, Mike, Stephanie, could you come on up? They're gonna, there's our friends are going to stand here as well. We're going to lead you in a prayer. I know there's one more person, but maybe they don't want to come, and that's okay. But I just, I believe that by you saying, I'm going to walk forward, as much as you say, ah, oh, I wanted to be in the back, I didn't want anybody to know. Because if you could do that, if you can't do that in church, how hard would it be to do it out in the world, to be bold about your faith? And I believe that you just broke that by saying, I'm going to go forward. And I'm going to make this decision as much as it might hurt. Ah. Okay. So let's, I want you three and then everybody else, I want you to pray this prayer with me as we, as you surrender your heart, life over to Jesus Christ. Everybody say, Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. I thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for my sin. Forgive me my sin and be Lord and Savior of my life. Today, I give you my heart and give you my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a praise. Okay, I'm, we're going to be dismissing here in a second. My friend Mike is right here. Take a look at Stephanie. Uh, he's going to be out in the lobby, and he's going to have some, some stuff, information uh, that he wants to give you. All right? All right, well, God bless you. Let's give them a hand for the decision that they made. God bless you guys. I'm going to pray a blessing over you. And I want you to go out, be an influencer. Be an influencer for Jesus Christ this week. 
Father God, I thank you for today. I thank you for each and every person that is here, Father. I pray that you would bless them, Lord. Bless them, come and bless them, go on whatever they put their hand to, that they will prosper and be blessed. And Father God, I thank you that they, that you've called us not to be a light only in the church, to be a light into the world. So I pray that we were good, that as we go out this week, that we would go and love people to life. God bless you guys. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus, you silence fear.